I will be talking about Companies House Connector. It's an independent publisher connector that I created and published uh, last year, I think it was now. Um, and we're going to talk about how the API can add value to organizations. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm Matt Connors Jones. Most people call me MCJ these days. Um, I've been working with uh, business applications for about 10 plus years. Uh, I'm a big Power Platform fan. Uh, I, my job role is senior uh, Power Platform solution architect. I'm also a cat dad. Uh, those are my two cats. And I'm also a dad dad. Um, and you can find all my social medias and, and things uh, in those links right there. So let's talk a little bit about um, how we how we use APIs in the Power Platform to, to add value. So there's different ways to, to call APIs. Um, this is a little bit of a generic slide, uh, so do bear with me, but it's it's all about showing different use cases here. So, so we can call an API through a clap, through a HTTP action in a cloud flow. This has some advantages. Uh, it takes very little time to do. You can build it, you can test it really, really quickly, uh, and it's great, you're good to go. Uh, it does have some disadvantages though. Um, you have to rebuild it each time you want to use it, or you have to make it reusable. So putting it in a child flow and calling it and then handling all those all those calls and things like that. You may need to update it in multiple places. So you may uh, change the API key or need to get a different piece of information, meaning you need to update it in uh, different places where it is uh, where it's deployed to. And these things are also slightly hard to govern. Um, you can turn it on or turn, turn it off the HTTP action. There's very little you can do elsewhere. There, there are some things you can do, but not, not for the majority of it. So that if you have a, an API that you want to connect to that you're going to be consuming data from regularly, most of the times you're trying, you don't want to make a custom connector. So a custom connector has a couple of advantages. It can be used across flows and, and power apps very easily, and it can be governed specifically through DLP as well. But it does have some disadvantages. These are only available in environments where it is deployed. This kind of sounds a bit stupid to say out loud. Um, it, it's only available where you deploy it. Yeah, that makes sense. But if you if you have like a small organization that maybe has a, a dev, a test, and a prod, then deploying it to those three environments is, is fairly standard and fairly straightforward. If you have an organization that has dozens or even hundreds of environments and they all want to consume this bit of data, it becomes a little bit more problematic. There's no central way to update this connector if it's deployed across multiple environments. You have to do the deployment each time so that you can uh, update it if you make a change or a bug fix. It also takes a little bit longer to write than the regular HTTP action as well. Now, if you think that the API that you're working with is going to add value to not only your organization, but also other organizations, you can go down the independent publisher route. So it's taking a custom connector, submit it to Microsoft, and becoming an independent publisher for that connector. This has a few advantages. These, again, can be used across flows and apps easily and can be driven through the DLP. They can be used in any environment worldwide. That's the big thing here. That's the reason why this is so great, is that no matter where you are in the world, and again, there's a caveat, some environments it may not be available, you can use this worldwide. In any environment, it's always going to be there, DLP permitting, of course. And it can be centrally updated. You can create a bug fix and you can submit that to Microsoft and they'll pu pu push that bug fix out uh, or add that additional feature out to the entire worldwide community so it can be centrally updated. You also don't need to own the API. This is this is really key here. A lot of organizations have their own APIs, but they're not building connectors for them in the Power Platform. You don't have to be the owner of that API to submit a connector to the independent publishers. You also get a shiny badge from the PMP community as well if you do that. Uh, the disadvantages, it can take a little bit longer than the HTTP action or the custom connector as well. So let's have a quick demo. So I thought what we would do is we take a look at Companies House. So Companies House, if you're not familiar with it, is a government organization that collates and maintains data about companies in the UK. So if I go to Companies House, I can search for a company. So if I, if I search Microsoft, I can find a couple of entries from Microsoft here. So we'll look at the one in Microsoft UK. And um, what we'll do is we will grab the company number, which is this one up here. And we'll go through to our apps. So I thought I'd do this on the fly, hoping the demo gods won't strike me down for this. Um, I'll create a new account in my database instance in my Moldra and app. Uh, we'll call the account name Microsoft. Uh, and we'll put in the account number that we just got. We'll hit save and we've created that record. Now, 
what the company's house connect allows you to do is it allows you to go off and retrieve information about a company so in this instance you may have um, tendencies where a company will have one name that is known by but also another one where it is a trading name uh, for legal reasons and you can also get some uh, some other details about a company as well so I've added in a custom button uh, onto my ribbon at the top here that says company's house a little smiley face if you press the button it's going to pop open a little custom page if i click run the flow on the custom page it's going to trigger my flow it's going to bring back that the microsoft limited is the trading name for this microsoft corporation and it's also populated in these address details here so i did all this so that you can see there's no no camera trickery nothing behind the scenes it's just going off getting that data and pulling it back so let's take a look at how this flow works so this flow is triggered from a Canvas app, it's triggered from a custom page, and I'm going to pass some information to the flow um, to be able to uh, pull back the right information. So I'll pass the, the record ID. We're then going to go and retrieve that row uh, by the ID. And then we're going to find that account number, the, the number that we put in, that company number in the record. Um, and I'm using my, my action here, which is find a company by the number. We then go back and we can update this information from what we received. So you can see here we've got the address details here. And then if I scroll a bit further down, we should see the, the company trading name here. And then we go back to the, the Power Apple flow and just say, yep, yeah, we've done it. And that closes the window and then refreshes the data for us. So we do have other actions that I can use as well. Uh, so if I click here and search for my connector, so company's house. So it's this one, Company's House, independent publisher, um, and we have a list of different actions that we can perform here. So all these different actions are going to provide us different things, uh, different pieces of information. So one we used here was uh, find company by number. It's usually the easiest way to, to find things. And we also have other actions in here. We can do like find address by number um, and, and different things that are kind of all legal and, and finance stuff uh, that I, I'm not going to pretend to, to know significantly, but it's, it's always to get different pieces of information. And if I go back here, this is a previous flow run that I did uh, with another company, uh, just to show you that it, it pulls back all these different pieces of information um, uh, and brings them all into one place. So the reason I like this connector is about two months after I built it and submitted it, I started working on a project where one of the very first requests was they want to retrieve information from company's house. So um, I went fantastic. I've made a custom connector for it. We added a button onto the ribbon. And honestly, but by the fact that I'd already done this two months ago, it made it so much more beneficial to that customer that, that we already had something that could do that. Um, and it's available to everyone, not just that one company. Um, I didn't need to develop it specifically for them. I developed it for everyone to use. Um, I can see a question in the, uh, in the chat about the cost. Um, Company Sounds does not cost anything. Uh, you can sign up for a free API key. All you need is the API key to use. Uh, it does use premium projectors, so yeah, you do need premium licenses. But with that, that's a very whistle-stop tour about all this. Thank you for your time today. Matt, excellent job. Very, very much thank you for sharing that with us. It's a really nice end-to-end -end, uh, example. Excellent. Mm -hmm.